issues that matter. You're watching King 5 News, up front with Robert Mack. And I still think that's what the public is desperately seeking, is an authentic conversation about the issues, get away from this tabloid stuff, and try to really get at solving problems. Mike McGavick, Republican candidate for Senate, joining us now to talk about his regrets and what voters should make of them. Thanks for joining us. Sure. Uh, we just heard you uh, call it uh, tabloid stuff. Uh, what part of the news coverage do you believe has become tabloid? Well, the example I used down to Coma that was the most absurd of all was I had this reporter who literally said, you know, I've heard you've claimed you won this track meet back in high school. Prove it to me. And I had to go run through our scrapbooks and try and find an article that could show that this was absolutely true. I mean, we just, we see this around us all the time in modern American politics. A focus on personality, a focus on personal traits, and not a focus on the issues that are at hand. Now, you want to get to these issues, uh, and yeah. yet it wasn't your opponents who brought all this up. It wasn't the press that brought this up. Uh, it was you who <laughs> yeah. brought it up. Can you walk right. into a room and say, I had a DUI, <laughs> yeah. and then come back a few days later and say, golly, I can't believe you guys are still talking about this. Well, two weeks later, I really can't believe it. In fact, we're a little more than two weeks now <laughs> sitting here talking to you. And, but, you know, I understand that this was going to be covered. I will tell you, I was surprised by the degree of coverage. Uh, but so what? I mean, yes, you're exactly right. I put this out there. I put this out there because I did think it was a part of my past that shaped who I am that the public should know. And there were other elements, as you know, that I talked about. But I will say I'm a little surprised that this is still the focus of this campaign. We're a nation at war. We have borders we don't control. And we have a social security system going broke. And yet, with the press, this is the focus. Now, let me share one more thing. I've been in front of a bunch of audiences since uh, these, uh, this, my blog. A bunch of audiences. Do you know what? I've never been asked one time, one time, by a regular citizen about any of this, only the press. Now, you've been in politics all your life, uh, so you know how this works. And uh, you know that if you don't tell the facts, quite accurately. The press is going to report that Look, and the story lasts true. for another day. There's no question the story lasted longer partly through my fault because I didn't remember everything right. That's I guess, absolutely true. I guess you did have months to prepare for the Senate campaign. Sure. Uh, why, why didn't you in, in that time call up the Maryland police and, and, and tell them to send over a copy because you knew you were going to bring <laughs> you, this up. You know why didn't so, you do that? Robert, you know what's so ironic about this? We did ask our staff, hey, let's find out what record there is of this. And they couldn't find any. So apparently we were inept <laughs> in looking for the record. And, you know, clearly, look, hey, it's embarrassing to misremember things. But it was 13 years ago. And it's not exactly my most cherished memory. <laughs> it's not something I, I hold celebrations of, you know. I made a bad mistake. And I didn't remember all the details. But the level of the brouhaha sense uh, is disproportionate and forgets the fundamental fact that I brought this out myself. I think that's a pretty big deal. You laid this out on your blog and, and voters yeah. are basically left to say, well, what does this tell me about Mike McGavick yeah. today? Yeah. Uh, let me just read a comment that someone wrote on your campaign blog. The person yeah. writes, your fairly recent DUI is fundamentally disturbing in the 70s before all the publicity of the dangers of drunk driving may be. But in 1993, you know, at, at, age, at age 35, it, is, it isn't exactly a, a youthful discretion. H has your judgment radically changed from 35 to age 48? Well, certainly with respect to drinking and driving, look, I understand completely that I made a mistake. That night was an aberration in my life. And I would ask anybody that's thinking about it that way, and I did read the, all the blogs that came back in from other people, and I'm sure you read them too, and you would, would be glad to tell your audience that most of them were very favorable. There were a couple that had that exact kind of comment. And we don't, we don't know if be, they're Republicans or Democrats well, writing on that either. blog either. <laughs> I don't know either. But I, I would remind you, as you, I would remind your audience, that most of the response to this has been very favorable among the public. You know, good for you for getting it out there. How unusual for a politician to share something negative about themselves. But to what I would say to that person and to anybody else who has that reaction, I would say, yes, fair enough. But judge it in the totality of my life. In the totality of my life, I've never been in trouble with the law before or since. And I am one who has learned my lesson. And I understand that lesson completely. There are people who ask, what, uh, how have things changed? When, when you were uh, CEO at Safeco, how much, how much did you drink? Uh, how often? How much? Did are you, you, did you, you, you've got to be kidding me. No, I mean, is it something you've <laughs> cut back on? I mean, have you, uh, did you change your lifestyle because of what happened? I mean, you said it was a life-changing event. You know, look, you know, I, drinking is not a big part of my life. 
you know, I, do I enjoy a social drink now and again? Of course, like, any, like many people, not everybody else, but like many people. But have I changed my behavior? No, not really. But fundamentally is I do not drink and drive, number one, because that is just against the law. It's stupid, and I know it as well or better than most because I've made that mistake. Uh, and more than that, you know, I think about, if you look at the totality of my life, the achievements and the difference I've made in people's lives, I think it's one of the most important things people should consider about me. In addition to the fact that I'm not like the typical politician who tries to hide everything that's unfavorable about them and only talk about what's good. That I think people are just sick of because people know better than that. Let me ask you about another one of your uh, regrets that you revealed is the failure of your first marriage. And, and again, I'm, sure. I'm wondering what this, what this tells you, us about you. Uh, on your campaign blog, here's what one person writes. Again, could be, a, could be a Democrat, we don't know. But he says, what I cannot understand is that a person who calls himself a family man would be making phone calls to a campaign rally during the moment of his son's birth. Mike, I think this speaks volumes as to where you set your priorities. Anyone that is so power-driven politically to prioritize business or politics over the miracle of their son's birth loses my vote instantly. Now, well, you're, that, you're, that's just not accurate. Is, yeah, it, it, what is, what is the story? Because your <laughs> wife tells the story of the Seattle Times that you were preoccupied with this rally yeah. while she was in labor. What is yeah. the story, and, and have you changed? Yeah, um, you know, this is an unbelievable thing. This has been reported twice in the Seattle Times and editorialized on the Seattle Times, and I've never personally been asked about it. It I'm just amazes you. me how this works. So let's go back in time. Uh, yes, when, I, when my wife went into labor, so we're now talking about 1983 when my son Jack was born, August 3rd, 1983. And uh, what happened was, I was running Slade Gorton's campaign, as you know. <laughs> it was a hectic time. And we had arranged this huge meeting where we had people flying in from all over the country to do this main strategy meeting for the fall. And I was running the campaign, so it was my job to kick it off. And we chose a date 